Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, some very good news uh, for patrons and indeed for others. We're going to be re releasing a couple of puzzle hunts soon from uh, Jurka van der, van der Wienendal, who um, has sent us puzzle hunts before that have been incredibly popular. So we're looking forward to that. I think one of them is probably going to be free and the other one is going to be the patron reward for next month so those are coming up soon on the patreon channel do um, subscribe if you want all of that content and you will want it so um, today's puzzle is from Stimim Chen and Simon has told me that I'll know how to get going in this one now I'm going to treat that comment with a pinch of salt because I don't know whether he's winding me up or not, frankly. So we'll see as we go along. Um, the It's a mix of killer. So there are just four little killer cages, little killer and thermo. So along the thermometers, numbers must increase as they start from the bulb and go to the end. Um, the little killers sum the diagonals they're pointing to. Those seven cells must add to 33 and can include repeats. And obviously in the killer cages, they add up to the totals given in the corners. So those four cells add to 18. And normal Sudoku rules apart from that. So let's have a go at this. Do try it on the link below the video before watching my solve. And let's get cracking. Now, as I was describing those rules, something certainly has occurred to me, and I think this is probably what Simon is talking about. There is a, what's become known as uh, Fistemafel's theorem, uh, which describes an extraordinary relationship in all normal Sudoku grids, um, by which I mean with three by three boxes and following normal Sudoku rules. These 16 cells in the two by two corners have to have the same digits as these 16 cells. And I'm assuming that that is going to be useful. Oops, I added a couple, but you know what I mean. Um, the 16 cells in the ring around the center are the same 16 digits as the ones in the four corners. Now that's got to be useful here, surely. Um, I will link his video that showed this because he explained it, and he explained it quite well, such that I understood why at the time. But I've frankly struggled with the maths of how that occurs. It's, it still seems a bit like magic to me now. So, I'm going to add up these four killer cages. 33, 56, 76, 81. So, these cells also add up to 81. They're exactly the same digits, so they must do. And that means they are 9 short of 90, which would be the sum of two 9-digit thermos, because they'd have to have all the numbers from 1 to 9 twice. These are 8-digit thermos, so they must be lacking a total of 9. That's not actually that helpful. If they were lacking a total of 2, we could fill them in. But no, they're lacking a total of 9. So. If five is missing on one of them, four is missing on the other. Um, and of course, it could easily be that Simon will know or recognize the Fistemafel thing being looking apparently useful and fall into that trap. So who knows? Now, these are the possible numbers on this thermo. There's only one degree of freedom on an eight digit thermo. Ah, and we've got a 3-4 pair in column 5 and a 7-8 pair in row 5. Uh, see, just as I'm thinking, well, if we're subtracting 9 from these two thermos, neither of them can lose the 9. They must both have a 9 in. But, and that's sort of useful. But there's another way of getting at that, because in these 7 and 8, one of them must have a 9 after the 7 or 8. So therefore, one of the thermos must be missing an 8, because one of these must be a 7. And the other thermo, therefore, must be missing a 1. Now, that is quite interesting. 
But I was also going to observe that since these are 7 and 8, they have to have larger numbers than them at the end. So one of them has to be 9. Well, anyway, we've got to this point now. Um, so one of these thermos is missing a 1, and one of them is missing an 8. Um, how am I going to use that? I don't think these little killers are much use. I mean, 48 is quite a big number, but the kind of maximum is 9, 7, 8, that's 24, 8, 32, 36, 9, and 8. 53. I mean, that's, even that is 5 degrees of freedom from 48. That's it's not bad, but it's not that helpful at the moment. <clears throat> so I don't think that's going to be the place to start. The others are all much lower, and 33 is not a particularly no, low number. 1, 1, 3, 1, 13, 14. And it's miles away from being a minimum. That's not that helpful. Right. Going to have to think of something else that is useful. So Simon's comment of your know how to get going, I'm entirely belying. I do not know how to get going. 25. Okay, one of these starts with a 2, and one of them doesn't. One of them starts with a 1, because a 1 is missing from one of these thermos. So... If the 2 was here, does that mean... Ah, there'd definitely still be a 2 on this one. Oh, that is interesting. If the 2 was here, there'd still be a 2 here on the other thermo, because one of them's missing a 1, but the other one's missing an 8. So we'd definitely still have the two 2s. They would rule out all of these cells sorry, these five cells from having a two. So the two would be in here with nine, eight, and six to make up 25. And this would be one, two, three, four, five. Nine, eight, and six would be in here. And how are you gonna fill two cells, both with sevens? That's not possible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would have gone in the row. 9, 8, 6 in the box. You've got two cells left here. They can't both be 7s. So there are no two digits that could do that. So this is not a 2. And we know which way the thermos go. Okay, that is a start. 5, 6. That's the one missing the 7. This is the one missing the 1. And now we've really got a start. And I mean, I wish I could now apply Fistemafel's theorem and suddenly fill in all those digits in these four corners, but uh, that is beyond my powers. I don't know how they would arrange. I mean, these are very averagey numbers. Maybe 15's a bit low, but not very helpful either. So let's have another look at this 25 cage. Um, maybe, I don't know, is that the thing to look at? Does the 9 and 8 have to be in it, say? If you had 9 and 8 here, you'd have 1 and 7 here. So this box would then add up to 33, plus these two would have to add to 12. Oh, they could be 8 and 4. Curses, that does work. Um... What should I be looking at then? Okay, how about the one? Can a one be in this box? If it, if it was, it would need nine, eight, and seven to go with it to make up the 25. So that would be one, nine, eight, seven. Ah, oh, yeah, then you couldn't put any numbers here at all because two, three, four, five, and six are pointing at these cells too. So they must include the one. It can't be in this box. 
and it clearly can't be in those two digit those two cells which see the one so one is there I don't think we can pull that trick for anything else oh well I tell you what we know that nine eight and seven aren't all in that box because it's the same situation it would be nine eight seven one so one of them is here oh I suppose that was obvious from the row this is either one nine one eight or one seven so this pair of cells are from seven eight and nine now so let's do the addition here 23 plus 2 is 25 plus 15 for 7 and 8 is 40 this could be 1 and 4 okay so 23 plus 2 25 plus 7 and 9 would be 41 this would be 1 and 3 and 9 and 8 is impossible because that would have to be 1 and 2 so 7 is included over here and 1 definitely down here Let's take that. Ah, oh, that's interesting up here. One can't be in those now. That one means it can't be in those. So, well, very unsurprisingly, one is in the 15 cage. Um, and two is as well. Two there and two there. Rules two out of all those. So the 15 cage is made up of one, two, and either four, eight, or three, nine. Ooh. Oh, well, that's quite interesting because where does six seven go in the box? Six seven there rules them out of those, and they can't be in this cage with one and two. Brilliant! So six and seven are a pair there, which puts eight and nine over here. <clears throat> Seventeen eighteen plus the eighteen is thirty six. These two add up to nine. They have to be five and four because all the other bigger numbers are gone. So three and two down here, 25, 36. This is one and eight, we now know. Take the eight out of here. That's a seven, nine pair. Do the maths one more time, 16, 18, 41. This is one and three. Let me just check that, because I'm suddenly not sure. 41, 42, 45, yes. Four and eight go in there and come out of these ones. So that's a one, two, three, nine. In fact, we know what all of these cages are made up of, just not where any of them go in them. <laughs> um, and I mean, we could check off four, five, six, eight there, four, five, six, eight, check the theorem, four, five, seven, nine, four, five, seven, nine, one, two, three, nine. One, two, three, nine. And two, three, six, seven. Two, three, six, seven. We have yet again proved, maybe not proved, but demonstrated Fistemafel's theorem at least. <clears throat> so we have a framework. And now from, we've used the killer cages, we've used the thermos in full. Now everything else is classic Sudoku and these little killers. So let's look at the biggest, 48. Absolute maximum up here, eight and six there actually, that's now very limited, and eight is 22, and eight is 30, and three is 33, and nine, is 42 and 8 is 50 so there are only two degrees of freedom around the 48 so we know that this is an 8 um, it can't be the 1 because that would require 7 degrees of freedom this is the 8 because the 4 is too little so, but we have two degrees of freedom in the rest so this could be its maximum 6 or 5 or 4 this could be 8 or 7 it can't actually be 6 because that's there and this one could be uh, 9, which is the maximum, or 8, or 7. So, can we bring it down any further? No, I don't see how we can. That's a shame. Let's have a look at the littlest um, little killer clue and see what the minimum is. 4 plus... One, eight, 
one again, nine, seven, 16, one again, 17, seven, 24. That's nine degrees of freedom. That is not very helpful. Okay, let's have a look at the 42 and the maximum this time. Three there plus nine is 12, plus four is 16. This could be an eight, 24, eight, 32. That could be a nine for 41. This, oh, it can only be a five, 46. That's still four degrees of freedom from 42. That doesn't feel so helpful. Oh, hang on, that eight is seeing that, so that is a nine. Well, it didn't change the degrees of freedom calculation. It takes nine out of those two cells. <sighs> How do we progress now then? Ah, well this 7-8 pairing it suddenly develops a little bit of odd interest because of this 3-4 pairs in columns 4 and 5. So they have to sit, 3 and 4 have to sit in box 5 in column 6. They must be a pair there. Ah, and that's on this diagonal. That 3-4 is. Oh, well that's interesting. Okay, let's... Um, Let's redo this one. Three plus, this is the maximum. Three plus nine is 12, plus four is 16, plus four now, the maximum. 20 plus eight, 28, plus nine, 37, and five is the maximum, 42. We know them all. Everything on that diagonal is its max. Wow, that's very clever constructing. And you kind of know when you hit a maximum like that, that that's designed for you to find. And that's very nicely designed. Right. And that hasn't changed any of these numbers. But it has changed. No, it hasn't. It hasn't changed anything. Okay, three sees that. So three and two there can go in. That, is that all I'm really getting from that? It can't be. Oh no, look, I can put two in this box there. Uh, that gives me a 2 up here. Ah, that 4, by the way, has disambiguated that 4, 5. Um, the 2 can't be up there. I don't think that's going to be helpful. Oh, it can't be up there either. Oh, something's gone wrong there. Yes, that is not a 2. So let's just undo. <laughs> Bit of nonsense there. Sorry about that. Um, that is not a 2 because there's already a 2 in this box. For some reason I think I saw that two as there and was combining it with that to put one there. Sorry. That four does still see this five and four. Okay, nearly went hideously wrong there. That would have been a disaster. Right. Um, I don't think that 33 was a lot of use. Let's try this 41. I haven't tried this yet and we do have some numbers on it. So, ooh, we have some low numbers on it. Right, so the maximum for this seven plus eight 15 plus 7, 22 plus 8 again, 30 plus 4 plus 2 is 36, but this could be an 8, and that's 44. Three degrees of freedom. Let's just fill in the possibilities. That is only 8, 7, or 6 by Sudoku. This one can't be 7. Why did it? Why? Oh, sorry, I had them all highlighted when I filled that in. That was very stupid. Okay, so. Right, eight, seven, or six there. Here, nine, four, seven, three. Ooh, lots of possibilities. And here, though, not so many. Eight, four, three, two, one. Now, let's do that calculation again. What were the degrees of freedom? Seven plus eight is 15. 22, 30, 34, 42, 44. There are three degrees of freedom. So the maximum eight must be here because it can't come down as low as four, which would use four degrees. Here, we can't use the one or two. Could come down to five. Ah, that eight has fixed this seven. That's quite interesting and rather unexpected. And that, that takes one degree of freedom out of that and out of that. Let me just check the maths there, eight. Three eighths is 24, another 10 is 34, 43, 49. Yes, there's only one degree of freedom. So, and that nine is seeing that. That's where the degree of freedom goes. This is the max, is a six. 
that can't be a six or an eight anymore. Is this actually? It's not quite a naked single, but it has to be the it has to be the five, and that has used up all the degrees because of the eight and the six. Looking at that cell, let's check that again. Eight, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-six. The maximum takes it to thirty-four, forty-one. Yes, and again, that's clearly designed to do that, and very prettily too. So we have one seven six along here. Um, so those aren't six, those aren't seven. One, nine, two, eight, three, that's not nine. They're not eight. In fact, that's not six. The only place for a six in this box now is here. Um, Hmm. I thought I might get more than that out of it. Nines can't be there. Right, so we've got one more diagonal to go, I think. Yes, we've done all the others. So, 4, 7, 14, 23. Wow, these other cells have to add to 10. I'm just going to colour them for a second. What are all the possibilities here? 1, 6 or 9. Well, it can't be 9 because the other two would... Both have to be at least one. Two or one. That's all that's possible there. Eight, six, seven, nine, five, four, one, two, or three. And they have to add to ten. So this has to be a six. Otherwise they'll never get there. Um, so we'll put a six in there. Now these two add up to four, but remember they could both be twos. This one can't be a one anymore. Wow, okay, nice. Feel like we're closing in now. These can't be, in fact, six can be placed in this box there because of that six and that six. So let's get rid of the others. Um, fives, these can't be fives. Wow, everything's getting much more restricted now, very happily at this stage. Uh, this can't be 8, can it? So the 8 goes there in box 7. Now we've got a 4-5 pair. That's 1 or 2. That's not all that helpful. 8-9-6. Oh, come on then. 8 in the central box there. It's all about the central box now. 9 is there. 1, 2, and 6 to go. 6, right, so 6 is there. 1 is there, that's a 2. Needs another 2 to make up the 4 that we needed on that diagonal. All the diagonals done. Now we've just got classic Sudoku and uh, my mistyping left to cope with. 3, 4, and 5 here, yes. 2 and 1 at the top. Don't know which way around they go yet, remarkably. 3 and 9 there. Uh, this one six seven yes six is there one and seven um, these must be resolved and I'm just not seeing how or maybe not uh, okay how about this column two this row two and four there three and one can go in surely yeah, the three at least hits that Eight, three, four, two, six. So we've got two columns to finish off. Nine and one. Five and seven go in. That seven does resolve this whole box if I keep typing the right letters. Yeah, there we go. What a puzzle. I mean, this is that is a really clever puzzle. I still don't quite know if Simon was messing with me about the Fistamafel trick or if he meant something else. Um, or maybe he was just being very straightforward, which is entirely possible. It does happen sometimes. But uh, that's a nice puzzle. And uh, thank you very much to Stimim for sending it in. I really enjoyed that. Very clever. Um, I doubt that you actually needed the Fistamafel trick. Once you get how the thermos, killer cages and little killers act together. I think there are other ways through that. Let, let me know um, if you did it without using this, um, at least the sum 
of the of the Fistema fell theorem because I think it can be solved that way. I will I will have a check on that actually afterwards. But thank you very much for watching. Hope that was of interest and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Lovely puzzle. Bye for now.